Chapter 6, How Sir Richard of Lay Paid the Abbot. My Londis Beth set to wed Robin until a certain day to a reich abbot here beside of St. Mac of Abbey. One day, soon after he came to the Greenwood, Little John was wandering with Robin Hood deep in the wilds of Barnsdale. With them were Scarlet and Much, besides a small party of picked bowmen, and they were in search of a hidden site in which to make a camp to which the whole band could retire if Sherwood should prove too dangerous at any time. When a place was found and the camp was being made, Little John said to Robin, Good master, let us shoot a fat deer for our dinner. We should be all the better for a feast. I have no great desire to dine just yet, said Robin, and there is still time to find us a guest for dinner. Do you and Scarlet and Much take bow in hand and go through the woods to the great north road, which runs not far from here? Wait there in hiding until some uninvited guest passes that way and bring him to dinner, whether he will or no. What kind of guest would you have? asked Little John, who was still unused to Robin's ways. Well, laughed Robin, some bold baron, bishop, or abbot will pay best for his dinner, or even a proud knight or squire. But look you, hinder no honest yeoman, nor laboring man, nor set upon any company if there be a woman in it of good and virtuous men. Away went Little John with his two companions, and were soon in hiding beside the road. At first there was no sign of any likely man, but at length a knight came riding slowly from the direction of York, his hood hanging over his eyes and his chin sunk sor sorrowfully on his chest. Then Little John stepped out into the road and bowed low before him, catching his horse's bridle in one hand as he did so. "'Welcome, gentle knight,' he said. "'To me you are very welcome. I come with an invitation for you from my master.' who waits fasting, as I and my two companions wait also until you are set at dinner with us. What master is yours? asked the knight. Robin Hood, answered Little John. A noble and a gentle master, said the knight. I have heard tell of him, and right gladly will I be his guest. So away they went into the greenwood and at the camp in Barnsdale. Robin greeted the knight full courteously. "'Welcome, sir knight,' he cried. "'Welcome you are indeed. "'I have fasted three hours in the hope of your company.' "'God save you, good Robin Hood,' murmured the knight, "'and all your merry men, too. "'I will indeed eat my dinner with you, "'though little appetite have I this day.' "'Then, having washed in fair water and uncovered while Robin said grace, "'they sat down to a fine meal of venison, "'with swan and pheasant as side dishes, "'and many other another delicacy "'with which skillful shooting had provided them. "'I thank you,' said the knight when the meal was ended. "'I have not dined so well these past three weeks. "'If I come this way again, "'mayhap I, I can ask you to dine with me, "'but there is poor chance of it now.' "'And the knight sighed sadly. "'Many thanks, kind sir,' answered Robin. "'But now, before you go, "'I must ask you to pay something "'towards what you have eaten. "'The tithe of the forest, we call it.' I am but a poor yeoman now, and it has never been a good manners to let a yeoman pay for a night's dinner. Alas, said his guest, sighing even more deeply, my coffers are empty. There is naught that I can proffer without shame. Search his saddlebags, little John, commanded Robin. You must not blame us, sir, he added to the knight. It is our custom, but tell me truly how much you have. No more than ten shillings, was the answer. If you have indeed no more, said Robin, I will not touch a single penny of it, and if you have need of more, why more will I lend to you? Here, called out little John, who had spread a mantle on the ground and emptied the knight's bags onto it, here I find but half a pound and no more. The knight is a true man then, said Robin. Fill him now a cup of good wine, and he may be gone if he will, or stay and tell his story. For indeed I wonder to see how thin and old his clothes are, and how sad and weary he looks. Sir knight, tell me how this comes about. Have you spent all or gambled all away? Did you lose money in usury or spend it upon women or has it been stolen from you? By God, that made me, said the knight. My wealth was lost by no evil of my doing. My ancestors have been knights this hundred years and more. We held fair lands in Cheshire. Four hundred pounds had I to spend in every year, and no name was held in greater honor than that of Sir Richard of Ley. But now I have no good save my wife and young children, and they are likely to starve. "'In what manner, noble Sir Richard, have you lost all this?' asked Robin. "'By the cruel craft and usury of the abbot of St. Mary's 
hard by here, answered Sir Richard. My son set out with King Richard to the Holy Land, and news came, but lately that he lay a prisoner, and I must raise a thousand pounds for his ransom, and that right speedily. Six, six hundred was all that I could come by, till the abbot lent to me four hundred on the surety of my house and lands. Tomorrow is the day that my bond to him falls due. If I do not pay him the four hundred pounds by noon, both house and lands are his, and I have but ten shillings, for I can beg or borrow no more. And what I had raised, Prince John's tax gatherers came three weeks ago and took from me. Maybe they did so at the prompting of the abbot, who, as I know well, longs to take all my lands. What sum do you owe? asked Robin. Tell me exactly as you can. Just four hundred pounds, answered Sir Richard. And if you do not pay it tomorrow, why then I lose my lands, and there is not for me to do but to go overseas and serve the king in Palestine. It would be a sight to have seen, ere I die, where our Lord lived and died as a man, and to have stricken a blow towards freeing his holy sepulchre from the unbelieving Saracens. But woe is me for my wife and small children, and for the land which was my father's before me, and which I had hoped would be my son's and his heirs forever." "'Have you no friends who can lend you the money?' asked Robin. "'Never a one will owe me now, though they were kind enough when I was rich and prosperous,' sighed Sir Richard. "'But now the only surety I can offer for a loan is my word as a knight, and my faith by Our Lady, the Holy Mother of Christ.' "'And no better faith could a man have!' exclaimed Robin, crossing himself devoutly. "'Go now to our treasury, little John, and see if you can there find four hundred pounds, and see also what we can do for clothes, such as a knight should wear. And this day, twelve months doubtless, he will seek us out in the greenwood, and tell us how he fares, and what he can give to us in return. Now may God bless you, kind Robin Hood, said Sir Richard, and be sure that this day, twelve months, will find me once again in your company. The time was drawing towards noon next day, and the abbot of St. Mary sat in great state in his abbey, with his monks about him, receiving payments of rents from the many tenants who held lands and houses from him. Most of the rents or debts were paid early in the morning. In a few cases, the tenant or the borrower was unable to pay, and then the abbot rubbed his hands and smiled a fat, contented smile, while his prior entered a new possession among the abbey's holdings. "'My lord, there is still the debt of Sir Richard of Lay,' said the prior, when all else had been paid or settled." Four hundred pounds did we lend to him, and he vowed to pay it, even to the last penny by noon today, or else forfeit his fair lands that lay in Cheshire. The abbot rubbed his hands. Many a rich, rich acre, he chuckled, and the fine house of Lay Hall. All ours, all ours. My lord, it wants still half an hour of noon, the prior reminded him. Tush, tush, gurgled the abbot. Sir Richard cannot pay. Prince John sent the tax gatherers to him but last month. Oh, I have it on sure authority that Sir Richard cannot pay. My good friend Sir Guy of Gisborne saw to that. Ha, ha. Yet we must wait until noon, said the prior. Ah, well, murmured the abbot, but a little while, and then all is ours. At that moment, a monk came swiftly to them. Sir Richard is here, he whispered to the abbot, but in poor array you need not fear that he can pay his debt. Sir, sure enough, Sir Richard came slowly up the hall, to where the abbot sat, and he looked sad enough and poor enough, too, in the old and tattered cloak which was wrapped about him. He came before the table at which sat the abbot with his prior and his justice, and knelt down humbly. God's blessing, my lord abbot, he said, I am here upon my hour. Have you brought the money you owe me, was all that the abbot could gasp out. Not one penny, sighed Sir Richard, and hung his head. Indeed, you are a sorry debtor, cried the abbot with a great sigh of relief, and then turning to the justice, he exclaimed, Drink to me, my friend. Wish me luck, good sirs. But what do you hear? he asked, turning quickly back to Sir Richard. If you have not brought my money back, why have you come at all? To beg for longer grace, answered Sir Richard humbly. Bethink you, my lord abbot, my son is prisoner to the wicked Saracens, he was taken, fighting at good King Richard's side, and for the benefit of Holy Church. Surely Holy Church will grant me but six months more to clear the debt, which I can do at that time. No, no, broke in the justice, your time is up. You must pay or forfeit. Now, good father, begged Sir Richard, stand you, my friend, and beg grace of the abbot. Nay, not I, cried the prior. Then, my lord abbot, pleaded Sir Richard, at least... 
Hold my land in trust until I have found the money and I will be your true servant and serve you faithfully. No, by God, shouted the abbot. You get no further help from me, false perjured knight that would cheat holy church of 400 pounds. Get you gone out of my abbey ere I bid my serving men whip you from the door like a stray cur. You lie, abbot, cried Sir Richard, drawing himself up suddenly. I am no false knight. But for you, a servant of God, to suffer a knight to kneel before you and beg your charity, you are shamed forever. Get hence, shouted the abbot purple with rage. Your lands and houses are mine. Hark, the clock strikes twelve. The clock strikes twelve, said Sir Richard quietly, and I have paid my debt. As he spoke, he flung back his cloak, showing that he was well and richly clad beneath it. Then he laid four leather bags on the table in front of the abbot and stood silent. The abbot's jaw dropped and the color fled from his face. Count the money, he said in a shaking voice. The prior did so and found it exact. Now, said Sir Richard, the land is mine again, and all the cruel abbots in England cannot prove otherwise. With that, he strode from the abbey while the abbot stood and cursed him, threatening vengeance when the time should come.